morning everyone, it's Tommy from TechNexus and today we're going to have a look at creating a new project in Plan3D and having a look at updating and patching Plan3D before we get started into a project. So once you've got it all installed, you fire up Plan3D, you're presented with this dashboard which will show some getting started videos, obviously your history, and then creating uh, new projects or opening existing ones. So what we're going to do today is create a new one. So I can just click on the new button here in the middle and I'm going to give it a name. So I'm just going to call this YouTube demo and I'm going to put a underscore in the front of it just because I want it at the top of my tree. So this optional description you can put in now or you can type in later. So I'm just going to call this YouTube demo project. Now I don't have Vault, but if you were to utilize Vault with Plan3D, you can tick this button on to create it in, in Vault, uh, and then you can click on this button over here on the right to define the path. Uh, obviously, all of this will appear once you have Vault. I don't, so we're just going to put it on my C drive. Now this button down here where it says talk about copy settings from existing project means if you have a template project uh, for yourself or for a client then you can tick that button on and select that project XML file and it'll reuse the settings so obviously for this we're just going brand new so I'm not going to do that now this one is for Imperial all metric so these are the base units uh, and it talks about all units based properties are reported in inches so we're in Australia we don't want that we're just going to do uh, everything in millimeters. Uh, you do have the option of doing mixed metric in here, but I'm just going to talk about uh, today's product uh, project being in millimeters. Um, where do you want the pin IDs? Usually by default, I like to leave it where it is. You can obviously store them in another directory, but when it comes time to archive the project, it is going to be a lot easier just to keep it in one spot. Um, there is four pin ID symbology standards you can use, PIP, ISO, DIN and JIS. Uh, I usually just like to keep it at PIP because we're going to change that later on for uh, company standard. The directory settings for now I like to leave, but in upcoming videos I will talk about parthing uh, the spec sheets folder to possibly um, another directory for a company standard. Now this one, single user or multi-user, so single user for SQLite local databases. Um, in, in the blurb there it says one or two members. I, in all honesty, I'd probably go maybe even three or four, uh, but depending on the size of the project. If you're knocking up a quick little one, then three or four is going to be fine. If you're going to uh, be doing a bigger project, then you can do uh, multi-user SQL Server. One of the upsides of creating a project in SQL Lite is that you can upgrade it to SQL Server, but you can't go from a SQL Server down to SQL Lite. So again, have a think about keeping your maybe corporate templates as SQL Lite and then upgrading them later. Now for this, I'm not going to go through the SQL database portion just yet, but it does talk about the server name, the prefix, and what kind of authentication. Um, so obviously I am not going to do this today, but we can talk about that another time. And then we can finish off the wizard and we can edit the settings uh, later. So what we'll do, we'll go through the settings tomorrow. But for today, we're just going to say that we've finished the project and it's going to create it. So what that is going to do is go away on my C drive now. It is going to make all the folders. I don't need to do anything from my end. I just need to wait for the product to finish making the project. And now you can see here we have the YouTube demo placed on my C drive and the four hard-coded folders uh, that are part of the project there as well. So we can't change those. We can uh, put subfolders in there, but uh, we can talk about the, that tomorrow. Now, before we kick off on a project, it's always a good idea to make sure that the software is updated. So when you go to your Autodesk account, uh, you can see that there is some product updates. Now, I know that this that is not a, a plant update, but it is a civil update that has come through. But again, it's always a good idea just to check uh, on your machine and on everyone else's machines within the company that, um, that the software is updated and patched as late as it can be. So what you can do is at the top right, click on search updates, click on plant, 
and then find that there have been some updates and I know I've already done these as well so I don't need to do anything here also another good tip as well is while you're in here up the top right you should be logged in to your uh, your user ID so it, it will be your Autodesk account and you can click on the little shopping cart icon and what that is going to do it's going to take you to the plant 3d app store now every Autodesk product has its own app store or it should do so whenever you go back to your product and you can click on the shopping icon you can see that it takes us to the to the uh, store for the plant 3d now this is something I'll cover in a later later video but there's a whole bunch of catalogs in here some will be for free some you will have to pay for so some here are $50 some of them are free there's a couple apps here that are $1.99 but if we look for free apps under the catalogs and specs then you can see here there's a whole bunch of Autodesk ones so the Autodesk ones have this blue box with the white arrow on it and then there might be some that you have to purchase or will be for free as well so again if you're looking for more uh, more libraries and catalogs for plant 3d this is the first place to look thanks for watching subscribe or notify hit the notify button and then um, we'll see you tomorrow for the next video on making the project